recent months, the government has undertaken several projects defending the standard gauge railway and backing peace efforts in South Sudan. Yet in the face of recent events in Turkana, criticism has, has been pouring in, the, in against the government with claims that it has misplaced priorities. Or does it? Ketian's Wilkie Stanyabwa reports. Kenya has a lot on its plate. Deputy President William Ruto's trial is ongoing at The Hague. Kenya is backing efforts to find a resolution to the conflict in South Sudan, and the Kenyan government is also fighting fires at home. In the face of opposition, President Uhuru Kenyatta asserted on Tuesday that there would be no turning back on the construction of the 327 billion shilling standard gauge railway. There comes a time and an hour when we must stop the noise and work must begin. A section of those who tuned in for the live broadcast from State House on Tuesday and again on Wednesday waited for the president to weigh in on a weighty matter, that of the fate of hundreds of thousands of people in Turkana facing starvation yet again. But the message never came. This now presenting an image of a government with misplaced priorities. It's because the priority of the two leaders is different from the priority of the rest of us as Kenyans. They're more concerned about international politics than they are concerned about domestic politics. We heard that the president had called a special press conference at State House. Many of us were delighted in thinking that perhaps the conference was being called to declare a state of emergency on the matter that's going on in Trukana, <laughs> where people are dying of hunger, uh, women are feeding their children on dog meat and the situation is dire. But we were shocked that the president called the press conference to whitewash the dirty scandal that is going on within the railway sector. The Jubilee Manifesto under which the president and his deputy campaigned contained a raft of proposals, especially geared towards easing the day-to-day -day struggles of those in arid and semi-arid areas. The Jubilee Coalition sought to prioritize modernizing agriculture and improving the business environment. It vowed to promote provision of water for irrigation and human use, among other things. After the Kenyans for Kenya initiative, which saw over 300 million shillings raised by Kenyans used to dig boreholes in order to irrigate the land, Turkana Governor Josphat Nanok pledged a further 3.5 billion shillings to expand the irrigation projects started under the initiative. Matters seemed to be on track. Then the short trains failed and various organizations including the Food and Agriculture Organization, the Metrological Department and the National Disaster Management Authority sounded a warning bell. It went unheeded by a government that was otherwise occupied. The end result that Turkana is facing hunger once more and over half a million residents are once again lining up for relief food as they wait in queue for the government to turn its attention to their plight. Wilkis Tanyabwa, KTN.